Welcome to the Crafting Character Podcast. Steve Carter here and in association with my good friends at Preaching Today, Food for the Hungry, and Hope International University, I bring you a podcast to help you get better at the craft of preaching and teaching and communicating, but with the hope, the sheer desire to have your character always lead the way. And I'm excited because 2023... I have a lot of expectancy about this year. Um, we're, we're mapping out how we want to help every one of our listeners really build a talk, a great talk, uh, to build kind of a, a catalog of great messages and sermons. And so every month, what we're going to be doing is working on one crucial factor to ensure a great talk. And so even later this month, we're going to be talking about prep and our study. And I can't wait to introduce you to one of my mentors who taught me the art of getting after what really is going on in the text. Um, but today, I have invited a dear friend. Uh, Steve Sonderman is someone I just respect. Uh, he leads No Regrets uh, Men's Ministry uh, for th- This is its 30th year, um, but he's been a pastor for so many years at Elmbrook Church in Wisconsin. Um, I've been up there. It's an amazing church. Um, He was a chaplain for the Milwaukee Brewers. Go Cubs! Um, But he, (laughs) I'll tell you what, if, if, if you want to know what character looks like, uh, it, it, it probably looks like Steve Sonderman. Um, I, I just love the pastoral heart that this man has. I love the calling that this guy has. I, I just love his heart for men um, and trying to really have them really, in, in my mind, like embody that kind of Acts eleven twenty four. He was a good man, full of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, and led a good number of people to the Lord. Like, I, I think that is what Steve just has been doing for year after year after year. And I know many of you who... Uh, listen to this podcast are women who are teachers and you teach on a weekend or you teach in student ministry and, and you've got to, or teach to young adults in college ministry. You're going to learn something about communicating to, um, the men and, and what, what, what like wakes them up? What catalyzes them? Many of you are pastors, um, preachers on the regular, senior pastors, teaching pastors, youth pastors. And, and you know, man, like the importance, the sheer importance of speaking to the hearts of Men, and I cannot wait to help you through this conversation learn about really speaking to the men, catalyzing them, and really drawing them into the grander story of God. So without further ado, Steve Soderman, welcome to the Crafting Character Podcast. Hey, Steve, it is so good to be uh, to be with you today, and uh, thank you for that wonderful introduction, and uh, just grateful for you and your friendship, and uh, just the chance to work together on, in so many different uh, venues and places, and uh, I've always appreciated your encouragement and uh, your support uh, in the ministry and what we're trying to do. So thanks for this time. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, well, 30 years, man, 30 years, this this. Uh, February 4th will mark the 30 year anniversary of the No Regrets like conference. I mean, just that's got to feel like, man, 30 years. And, yeah. and when I think about 30 years ago, there wasn't very much going on for no. men. Um, talk about like, like the, the wh- what like was the genesis, the catalyst for starting sure. this ministry 30 years ago? Yeah, I, um, I was doing college age ministry at the time at Elmbrook Church. I had been uh, the college age pastor for about uh, oh six years or so, and um, I had also done um, high school ministry before that uh, as a volunteer for six years. Um, Did some young adult ministry, so I had done a lot of student ministry, and and so after six years of the college age ministry, I went to Stuart Briscoe, who was then our senior pastor. And I said, Stuart, I am so sick of pizza parties, retreats, bus rides. I said, you got to get me out of here. I've just got to do something different. I have four of my own kids. I got about 400 kids showing up for the college age ministry. I, I just, I'm done, right? And so I gave him four options. I said, I can do assimilation. I could do prayer ministry. I could do missions or I could do evangelism. And he said, okay, let me get back to you. So he got back to me in a month. He said, Steve, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do men's ministry. And I said, Stuart, that's not on my list. I said, evangelism, missions, you know, uh, prayer or assimilation. 
And he said, I want you to do men's. I go, Stuart, what do I do? I said, I have never worked with a man in my life. He said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to do the very same thing you did with the college kids. Just try to act a little bit more mature. <laughs> so took off the shorts, put on some long pants, got a long sleeve shirt, you know, and, um, and that was the start. And uh, literally, Steve, I just, I started talking to some people that uh, were doing ministry to men. It was not happening in the churches at all. I think I was probably the first, Stuart was such a forward thinking guy to have a, a pastor designated for that. There were some parachurch ministries start, you know, doing things over the years. Um, and so I started talking to them, spent a lot of time in prayer, talked to guys individually, met with them one-on-one. -on -one. What are you looking for? Um, what would ministry to men look like for you, for your neighbor, et cetera? And, um, and really, the, the whole first nine months was just prayer and seeking God and building a prayer team. And then we we launched the ministry that following fall. It started in January. It wasn't until the fall. And really, all we did was I took 12 guys and I met with them on, on Tuesday morning, 12 guys on Wednesday morning. For that next year, that's all we did. And I can't tell you how many letters and phone calls Stuart got. People were so mad. Why aren't we doing a retreat? Why aren't we doing a men's breakfast? Why aren't we doing this, that, and the other? And all they wanted was a bunch of events. And, um, you know, and I just said, I've got to develop some leaders first. And so I started small, went slow, and, and built into those 24 guys for the first year. And it really um, was really what we did. That was the, the the basis, the foundation of everything we did in the future was that that deeper discipleship. And um, and then after the first year, um, some guys came to me from from Illinois, uh, from Antioch area, and um, and they had this vision. They said, "Listen, we um, we think." that you should put on a conference for men. And, uh, you know, it was one of those things like, you know, God loves you and we have a wonderful plan for your life, you know? <laughs> and, um, and, and so they said, we just, but we just think, you know, Promise Keepers has just started up in the summer out in Boulder. And we think the guy should have something um, mid-year and maybe like, you know, in February. So we did the first conference and, you know, we had no idea what to expect. And I literally, it was a Friday night and I thought, it was just going to be a one and done. We're just going to do this once. It's like a nice event. And, and that's it. Well, we had um, Stuart was the MC, And then we had Joseph Stoll, who at that time was the president down in Moody. He came up was the speaker. And uh, Steve, it was sort of like, if you build it, they will come wow. type of moment. We had just moved into the new sanctuary that held 3,200. That was, was filled up 45 minutes before we started. We had the old chapel that the old sanctuary, which held 1600, that got filled up. And then we had guys all over the the, the fellowship area outside both of those areas. So we ended up with 5,000 guys that first Friday night. And um, we were like, oh my goodness. We, did, we, 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 we charged five bucks. We didn't even just sell tickets. And, and literally our guys had garbage bags at the doors and guys are just throwing $5 bills. It was, it was just craziness. And uh, I'm, I'm reminded of that picture of, uh, of, of, of the movie, you know, where they're in Iowa, after they build the, the stadium there and the cars are lined up at night, there's coming in, you know, I-94 was blocked off and it was just a great night. And so that was the start. And, uh, you know, we did it for, um, gosh, about 12, 14 years. We moved it to Saturday, moved it to, to Saturday all day event. And of course, you've been there a number of times now as a speaker. I've had great speakers from all over the world come in and helping to lead it. And then about 15 years ago, we went, started streaming it. And um, it was sort of, again, by accident that that happened. Um, and our guys were way ahead of the curve on that. And we just started with um, three sites. Uh, one out right here in Milwaukee, one up in um, Appleton, and then another one in the city here. And then we went to nine sites, 12 sites, and then over the, it's just grown. And again, we, we don't advertise, we don't publicize, we just, it's just, it's just word of mouth, just man to man, and the thing just continues to grow. Where last year, we had 113 sites, we had 135 small groups, and we were in 35 countries. And 
and it's just one of those only God things. It just it just has happened. And this year we're already to that place. I think we're at 110 sites. We got a month to go. And it's just incredible. And we're in all size churches. We'll have, you know, 30, 35 guys in a, you know, I still remember a few years ago, we had a church in Iowa. They said, Steve, we want to be a host site this year. Um, our only problem is we don't have internet. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. And so we put the internet in for them. We said, don't worry about it. We'll buy the internet. We put in the internet. And, um, you know, they had 30 guys in their fellowship in the basement there. And that's great. And then we'll have a church in St. Louis with, you know, church with 12, 15,000 people in attendance, four sites that they hosted at, you know, everything in between. And, um, you know, it's just been so fun to, to, to watch God work over the last number of years. It's amazing when you have that experience where, you almost like stumble into such a deep ache and you know, yeah. you know, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. uh, God's hand is on it. Um, I want to go back to one thing you said that I, I've always just been curious about this. Um, in, in, and you, you went and started meeting with men um, mm-hmm. and, and you still do this. So, you know, uh, yeah. last year when I was at the, the conference at the end of it, you, you know, you had a, a group of men you were meeting with afterwards. Like you, you're constantly with guys and, you know, you, you've been in locker rooms as a chaplain for the brewers. Like you yeah. have been in boardrooms, like you, you have an ability young and old, um, yeah. those that are far from God or close or like very, very close. Like you care about the heart of men. I'm curious, um, 30 years difference. Do men want the same things they did when No Regrets started, or has it shifted? What are you, what are you finding um, as like, man, this is yeah. this is what men are looking for from from preaching from a men's ministry? Yeah, well, uh, loaded question and great <laughs> question. I think, I mean, the short answer is, I think there are some things that are the same, and I think there are some things that are that are different based on gen- generational differences. Um, the same would be what I call a meeting with a purpose. And I, I was so the best advice I ever received was from a, one of my mentors who um, had ministry to men under his umbrella as an associate pastor as one of 10 things, you know. And I met with him. I said, Virgil, Virgil, great guy, older guy at that time, played football for Bear Bryant at Alabama and had a great Southern accent. And uh, he said, Steve, ministry to men is on their time, their turf, and their agenda. Wow. And, and Steve, I've never forgotten that. It is the, the foundation of everything I do. Um, it relates to a one-on-one meeting. It relates to preaching. It relates to everything. But I think that one-on-one meeting is something men are looking for today. Um, When I was uh, just doing a lot of research on 20-something men, um, a a, a guy who is sort of an expert in this area said, Steve, every young man is walking around with a post-it on their forehead that says, mentor me. And I think they're looking, younger men, as well as older men, are looking for that one-on-one connection, that relationship. And so what the majority of my ministry was trying to meet a guy for breakfast and lunch. And if I didn't have a breakfast and lunch meeting every day of the week, I got mad at myself because I I wanted it not at the church. I wanted it on their turf, either at their office, near their office, um, at a restaurant, but somewhere that was that they chose, somewhere they were comfortable with. And I have found over the years that um, almost like the Alpha program, when Nikki Gumbel discovered that you know, doing stuff over meals was so helpful. I have discovered the same thing, that just having a meal together sort of breaks things down. It breaks the ice. Guys feel comfortable. Um, it's in a setting they're not used to. And in there, I just, I, I pray before I go in and I just let the conversation go. And I have these, what I call meeting with a purpose, guys that are far from Christ, close to Christ, are new believers, um, need to be mobilized to serve, who are leaders, anywhere in their spiritual journey of having these one-on-one meetings. And then I just ask them questions. I start with the easy questions. How's it going? Packers, brewers, bucks, um, you know, badgers type questions and how's the family doing? How's work going? And then it's like unpeeling the onion and you just go a little bit deeper and deeper 
in deeper. And every once in a while, you're going to hear a little, you're going to see a little, hear a little kink in the armor. Something's going to come out. You know, I've been struggling. Me and my wife are really struggling a little bit. Really, what's what does that look like? Or how is that showing itself? And then they'll go into that. And so we might dive into that. Or maybe it's a struggle in parenting or something in their spiritual growth or issue with one of their parents or, you know, whatever, Steve. But I just found that that I have a list of questions on my iPad and I just learned them over the years that, and, and I just, and then oftentimes in those conversations, I, I just, you just listen. You just allow the guy to talk. So often they're being talked to and I let them talk and I draw them out and you can listen for where's the hurt, brokenness, pain, uh, question, struggle, doubt, joy, celebration, you know, whatever it is. And then you give them time. And then how can I, what can I do to help? Is there anything I can do? You know, we want to fix it right away. We're going to jump in with the five how to's, but I let them tell me, what does, what does ministry to you look like? How can I walk with you through that? How can I pray for you? It might, I might resource them. I might connect them with someone. I might, there might be a book we could read together. Um, You know, it, it could be different things. But I really just allow the spirit to take over those conversations. And Steve, I just can't tell you, when I look back over 30 years, that's been the constant of just constantly meeting with guys one-on-one and and just getting into their story. Tell me, I just start with, tell me your story. Mm. You know, we haven't been together. What's been going on the last year? What was the, how did COVID affect you, your work, your family? You know, you just use modern day things and, and you get into it. So that's, that's that's just one thing that I would say that is the same today. Yeah, I think that's so beautiful. And you know, I, I was um, I, I had heard about you um, for years, and obviously that you know, when I, being in Chicago, I had known of the the story of Elmbrook and the Briscoe, Stuart and Jill, and just the just the legend of who they are and what they represent as uh, pastors and leaders and teachers and their character and their great accent, um, being from from the <laughs> uh, for Britain and. Um, but I, I remember being up at a, a family camp mm. and in, in like Northern Wisconsin, Rhinelander. Um, mm. and there was this, this like larger than life man there. And he had a big family with like three boys. And mm. he, you could tell that the guy worked out. He was a business guy, loved sports. And, um, and, and, we we start chopping a little bit and his name was Tony McCutton and and Tony Tony's like man have you ever heard of no regrets do you know Steve Sounderman and i'm like oh i know that name and it was like oh he he and i met once and da-da, like and i you go to this this conference and i like you, 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 there's like one thing when you hear um someone who's putting on the conference like mm-hmm. talk about like the the conference and how great it's going to be. It's another thing when and a dude who like you know uh, is crushing in his business has three boys. One's in college as a running back. One's like in the military. One's starting his career. Like and just talking and like selling me on how important this thing was. And that's when I was like. If this guy is an advocate and a voice for this, and he's like, Steve, you got to be in the room because you want to know what really moves the hearts of people is when 3,500 men are singing and worshiping, when 3,500 men are standing, when 35, and he's like, and then they're like, they're going to start blasting it out to like different states. And like, there's other states that are worshiping and in living rooms. And, and he was just fired up about it. And I just remember going, gosh, that level of passion, something, something was unlocked in him. Mm -hmm. And I realized something is what I think has been so powerful about how you have orchestrated um, and and really coached many preachers and pastors Mm -hmm. and men's ministry leaders is, is like, you've been able to do a few functions really, really well. So you talked about the, the one-on-one, you talked about spending a whole year developing your core mm-hmm. leaders. And I, so I want to come back to that. Like what is mm-hmm. developing core leaders and the importance of having the right mm-hmm. leaders? But you've also been able to build a ministry mm-hmm. that was something that other guys like a 
Tony would be excited about to invite their friends to. Even last year, I ran into him when I was there and he, he was introducing me to a buddy that he brought, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I think that there's that piece where sometimes guys think it's just the event mm-hmm. and they don't, they don't shape the leaders or they right. think it's just one on one. And they've got some leaders, but they don't know how to do the event. You've been able to do these three, add in a cohort, add in some kind of even um, workbook material to really help facilitate good conversations, good topics to have. But I, I think that there's something that you've done there around building a healthy men's ministry. Is there any other functions that, that I might be missing? Cause I think some of those are really, really important to the success of what you did at Elmbrook, but at no regrets. Yeah. Yeah. I think the, uh, you know, the, when it comes to, to ministering to men, I think what we've done is I've, I, I viewed it holistically. So instead of viewing it just as a men's ministry, a sort of a piece in the pie, children's ministry, women's ministry, men's ministry, couples ministry, et cetera. When, when, when I was working with the men of Elmbrook, and what I really encourage churches now through our leadership cohorts is to view it as ministry to men, that it's all encompassing. And what I mean by that, Steve, is that part of ministry to men is preaching on Sunday morning. And, and, and so that's when you're probably going to have the, the biggest you know, group of guys gathered. And it's not a men's breakfast or a men's small group, but it's it's ministry to men. It's a chance for a pastor, um, whether it's a man, a male or female pastor, to 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 speak to a large group of guys. And I think there's some basic things that we've learned over the years that you do so well and, and others do well as as well. And 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 that is one, I think I'll just mention a couple of things that I think are important here. I think uh, one is it needs to be relevant. You need to speak on topics that are relevant. You need to make the Bible relevant. I mean, the Bible is relevant. We need to just open it up so guys understand it. Um, here's the statistic. I just read it this week. I'm, I'm developing a Bible study on bringing your faith to work. Is that um, in, 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 I think it was around 2010 or there, Barna Gallup did a poll and they asked, how many of you have heard a top, a, a sermon on the topic of work in the last year at your church. 92% said they had not. So think about that for a minute. That means that 92% of the people coming into our church have not heard a sermon based on where they spend 40, 50, 60 hours of their week. And so I think what happens so often in the church is that we're answering the questions that they're not asking, and we're not answering the questions they are asking. And so, you know, in those one-on-one meetings, when you're meeting with your men, meeting with the people of your church, you're going to find out what are the issues they're dealing with? What are their struggles? And where are the, the, the tensions, the pressure points? And we can be addressing those on, on Sunday morning. And so for a guy, work is huge. Being a, a, a husband, a father, being a friend, purity issues, um, faith and work issues, purpose. I mean, all, those are all issues that are top of the heap as far as what they're, they're, they're dealing with. So that's one thing. I think a second thing is using stories that they can relate to. Stories from the marketplace, stories from marriage, stories from parenting, stories that that draw them in, whether that's in your introduction or to illustrate a point, but using stories from their world. Again, we're talking about mystery on their turf. Use stories and illustrations from their from their world. The third application I'd say for preaching to men is just being real. Men can spot a poser a mile away. And so just to be real, to be authentic, you you know, there are no perfect people allowed in the church. I'm not sure who wrote that book, but I love the title. Yeah. And, um, and, and just, you know, show your warts, show your struggles, be honest. And I'll tell you, when I, when I talked about my, my addiction years ago and my struggle area, the guys, couldn't believe it, you know, and 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 it just opened up so many doors. When Colleen and I talk about our struggles with our marriage or a parenting issue, you know, when we when we when you open up about what's going on in your life, it's so helpful to the guys. They'll respect that and they'll go, "Oh, I'm not the only one that struggles with that." Yeah. And then I'll uh, the fourth principle I would say is um, application. Always leave time for application. 
too, too many guys just want to talk about the 27 different views of the second coming of Christ. Land the plane and say, okay, when we get done with this small group or we get done with a preach, here are here are two or three applications. And to, to make it very specific, guys like the bottom shelf. And so we give it to them there so they can understand it, they can take it, and they can apply it today and, uh, and, and work it into their life. So that, you know, as far as Another area that that preaching to men is so important. I, I think the other thing I'll just add one more. If you're not sure, get a focus group of guys together. Yeah. Just say, hey, guys, invite five, six, seven, eight guys into your office. I'm thinking of a couple sermon series. What what do you, what do you think about these? What are some titles that that might be good for these sermons that that that, that resonate with you as as a guy? Any stories or illustrations you can think of about these passages or you know whatever series it's going to be? But 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 have a focus group and get their their input as well. So that's just one other area, Steve, that I would say is important, is seeing it all, everything. So it's it's the preaching, it's it's ministering to guys. You know, when they're in the hospital, that's ministry to men. When you're running your board meeting, your elder board or deacons, whatever governance you have, that's ministry to men. You know, when you're in the hallway talking to guys, all those things, it's all related um, to, to ministry to men. I love that. I think that's such a, it, it really just takes it out of a, a Thursday night in the fellowship hall or a Tuesday yeah. morning. And it, it helps you see, gosh, the, the whole story. Hey, I want to, I want to play off that in the preaching side, because that, that idea of being real and um, Kenton B. Shore, he, he was the former lead pastor at uh, Mariner's church. And I, I always loved, he, he would say, um, you know, if, if you're on that stage and you are pretending that you have the best marriage, you're not helping anybody. Right. Um, and right. oftentimes I think men, for many, many years, the stories that we told were stories that we were the hero. Mm -hmm. And what I think that we're recognizing, you know, Paul writes about this. <laughs> if I'm going to boast, I'm going to boast in my weakness because it shows my need for Christ. And yeah. I think in that that moment of being real, is how do you begin to unveil those pieces that are honest and human, but show, gosh, that level of um, steps that you're taking towards health, steps that you're taking towards the cross. Um, but I, I, I find that to be one of the most moving spot parts about No Regrets is mm -hmm. the level of like conversations um, that happen both on the stage um, or often in breakouts. But, mm -hmm. you know, in my group last year, that happened in the hotel lobby afterwards. And mm -hmm. just, I think what, what's amazing is the multiplying effect of s someone from the platform who's being real and transparent and how that opens a dude up and how that opens a dude up and how that opens a dude up. And all of a sudden you're looking around and you're like, dude, that guy just shared. I, I didn't even know his like last name. He was just John. And now it's like, I know John, but I know his like story. I know like what he went through and oh my goodness, Tom, like you just, there's something about that. Um, I, I'm sure that's been your experience to see. Um, yeah. wh why do you think that is? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I, I think, well, I, like you said, Steve, authenticity is contagious. And, and, and that's, we, we, we've seen that over the years. Um, I mean, we are, we are selective in who we ask to come and speak. And I, I would say there, there are some people that really speak well to men and there's some that just, that's just not their thing. And that, that's okay. Um, but we, one of the, you know, sort of on our checklist of things we're looking for in a speaker, we want them to be biblically sound and we love them to be connected to a church. And, but we ask, you know, we ask ourselves, do they speak, do they speak to well, men well? Um, and part of that is, are they authentic? And so we've tried to model that. We, we, we talk about it with the speakers on Friday night at our speakers dinner and, and just encouraging them to be, to be open and vulnerable and real. Um, and I think that's something that we've just from the very beginning said, we want this to be one of our, our pillars in a sense, one of our, our values for, for who we are and what we're trying to do, whether it's through our, our, our written materials, our study guides, or through the, um, the, the, the conference and things like that. So uh, I love that. I think it's so, it, it's, it's, 
it's definitely apparent, you know, and, yeah. and I think too, again, how you've, you know, with the, even the podcast, like just allowed some real conversations, mm -hmm. but the conversations are really great. Again, if you're a pastor and you're looking to build a men's ministry or this ministry to men and grow, whether from preaching to men or just to, to really ministering well to the men in your church, um, check out the podcast. Um, but, but also, man, I would tell you to check out, um, this conference on February 4th. Um, mm -hmm. again, you, I'm sure there's a place that you can go to, uh, nearby where you live. Um, and, or you can join me in Brookfield, Wisconsin and, and, and go there. Um, it's, it's a great experience. It's one of my favorite things to be a part of. I, I, I drove up last year with my group of guys. Um, and it, it was just, I was just going to a tent, just like paid for by myself to go to a tent. That's like, and, and so I just, I say that to, to go, this is not just someone who's like, oh, uh, he speaks there. No, no, no. Like, this is something that I paid to go to attend. And, um, yeah. if you want to learn more, you can go to menwithnoregrets.org, menwithnoregrets.org. We'll have it in the show notes and everything. But, but I know that there's some of you pastors here who, go, okay, I, I, I'll definitely check out the streaming. I'll, I'll definitely like maybe go to a satellite or, or go to the conference. And I'd love to, I'd love to do that, but I'm still trying to figure out how to build a mm -hmm. men's ministry or this ministry to men and do that well. And again, one of my favorite parts about Steve's heart is not just throwing events, um, mm -hmm. but really, um, helping men lead and lead in churches all across the world. And again, I'm speaking as someone um, who has um, a, a, a bunch of guys who went through a cohort that Steve and his team put on where they get just really practical opportunity to learn. Um, and then, you know, this past Thursday night, I was at what we call the frat, um, which is our men's ministry. And I was there and these, these, these guys were leading. And, and so again, um, I can, I can see all that you are doing to shape, pour in and inspire. Talk about this cohort, because I think there yeah. might be some pastors across the country who go, Ooh, I didn't even know this existed. How do I sign up for that? Yeah. Well, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that intro. Um, in getting us talking about this because in, in some ways, this is really my heart more than anything. I mean, the conference is great. Um, but it's a one day deal and it's, it's, it's catalytic. And I'll just say one thing that I'm going to get into this to, to, to help the conference, not just be a one day event. What we've done is designed, we've written a six week follow-up and in last year, it was so cool. 50% of our host sites use the follow-up study as a, to continue that momentum. And so when you think about it, that means six or 7,000 guys were in small groups after the conference meeting for seven weeks to really process and talk and get into the Bible and get into each other's stories. And, and we, you know, that'll be available get this year. So we're we're interested in not just putting on an event, but really helping churches um, to to launch a movement of discipleship. And and the main way we do that is through what Steve just talked about this leadership cohort. And for twenty five plus years, I had done training. Um, uh, uh, we called it a How to Build a Life Change in Men's Ministry. It was a two-day event, Friday and Saturday, all day, eight hours each day. And I would just fire hose guys. <laughs> they'd fill the manual. They'd be done. Then they went back to their church somewhere in the country. And, uh, you know, it took a while, but I finally realized this is not the best way to train. And so what we've moved to now is what I am really excited about because we're starting to see the results of it really paying dividends. And, and, and what we do is I'll take... 12, 14, 16, 18 leaders, and we will meet by Zoom from all over the country once a month for, for two to three hours on a Thursday night or Monday night. We do them different times based on schedules. And um, and for six months, I will walk with that group, that, that cohort, and we'll walk them through the basics. Who are men today? How do I build a leadership team? Because we know if it's just one guy trying to do it, um, it's not going to happen. If it's the, the the pastor, oftentimes doesn't have time, and so he can send some volunteers to to do it together. The cohort. How do you build a leadership team? Uh, 
what, what, how do you develop a spiritual pathway for your men looking at the life of Jesus? And then how do you put together a plan for either starting something or growing something if you have something? And then how do you incorporate small groups into your ministry? Because we know the optimal place for a guy to grow is small groups. So we really tackle that one. And then we talk about um, developing leaders. How do you develop leaders for your ministry? And so over the six weeks or six months, we do each month, we do a large group together. Then a second time their month, during the month, we meet in a smaller group of three to four guys where we can get more personal and share prayer requests and talk about application and, and debrief the material. So for twice a month, we're, we're investing in these guys. Then they work on their plan. And then for the next six months, we're committed to coaching them and being available to them. So really what we're doing is we're making a year-long commitment to the church and saying, we want to help you develop a ministry to men in your local church to, 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 to help disciple your men. How do you reach men for Jesus? How do you root them in Jesus? How do you release them for kingdom impact and reproduce them as leaders in life? And so that's the process that gets me most excited now is walking with these churches. And again, we're not we're not working with hundreds of churches because that's just not manageable. We're just taking a small group. So, but we're going to be starting another cohort right after the conference. And so if anyone's out there listening and you're going, man, I want to go through that as a pastor and bring a couple guys with me, or if you have a couple high capacity volunteers that you've identified, you have time now to tap them on the shoulder and ask them. Um, it's it's better if there are two or three guys going through it together, just like your, your guys did, so they can talk about it and they can work on it together uh, rather than just by themselves. But uh, that's where I'm spending the majority of my time, um, is just investing in leaders, both here in this country and then literally all over the world. Um, it's so we're here to help in any way we can. Th that's It's so incredible because I think, um, you know, for, for those of you who are leading, you know, you, you've got elder meetings. Um, you've got donor meetings, you've got to write a sermon, you've got HR issues, you've got vision casting, you, sermon planning, you got Easter that's, you know, 90 some days away. You, you've got all of this, this stuff that's coming and, and we all know the importance of building a, a sustainable, healthy, flourishing ministry of men. But sometimes we're like, oh my goodness, I know I need to do it. But I can't, I can't develop the right person um, because my schedule is too full. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this is where this cohort, mm -hmm. friends, is, is awesome because you get one of the best on the planet to pour into the guys in who will be taking this ministry. Um, someone that's trusted, someone who is beloved, someone who is like established in this and, and it's, it's like they get to come back. They feel empowered and they get to check in with you, let you know what they're learning, what they're wanting to build. But there's this, this sense of empowerment and release and, and they're getting coached. And so, man, I'm telling you, um, to see these guys who return back from this cohort mm -hmm. fired up to see them now leading to it's, mm -hmm. it's serving men all throughout the city. Um, and honestly, like, I, I have no part in it. I get to be an attender. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, because it, it was trusted in the hands of Steve Sonderman and no regrets. And so, so again, just as someone who I've seen the benefits and, and, um, joy, um, man, I, I think that is an amazing opportunity. I, and I, and then I just can't seem to shake this man. Um, just Stuart Briscoe just saying, Oh, I hear you're four but I'm going to raise you. <laughs> um, you could do assimilation and you could do prayer. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I'm, I, I'm actually going to, going to push you to something that's going to require you to actually do all four. Um, and it's going to be this ministry to men and to see the countless number of lives that have been affected by his month of prayer and mm -hmm. that conversation and your yes and a church in Antioch saying you need to throw a conference and that only God yes. 
to what it's become to 110 sites. And maybe you're listening and you're like, oh man, we're, we're in, you know, Peru and we want to do a site for our men or we're, we're like in Colorado. We want to do a site for our men. Like, like reach out to them there. They're, but like to see that, Steve, I just have this moment. Um, and I, I don't think you're ever going to know the kingdom impact this side of heaven. Um, and I like, I had like this, just picture of someday, you know, and hopefully it's years and years and years to come. But someday when you walk into those gates of heaven, there's going to be guys who showed up to that no regrets conference, you know, in 1999. Um, and they were dragged there by a buddy mm-hmm. and it changed their life. And when they had to fight cancer, um, they had an anchor to fight that well. Um, but you didn't know them. And you didn't know their name. Um, and you didn't know like that marriage that got saved, um, because of how the gospel was presented and how through that a ministry to men was started in a local church in Des Moines, Iowa or in Columbus, Ohio, because Columbus, Ohio needs the Lord, those Ohio state fans. Um, but like the, the, you will not know, you know, and I just, I, I think like, gosh, even as you go, and get prepared mentally and emotionally and um, for this next conference, man, I, I just, I hope you feel that anointing and love um, because uh, what you and your team are doing, man, is, is, uh, is really, really special. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. And in some ways it is holy ground when we all gather together and something special does happen when men get together and they can, you know, talk about the things that matter when they can sing songs in the right key, when they can, uh, you know, just talk guy stuff, but also be really challenged and encouraged and uh, equipped to be godly men. And, um, you know, I, uh, all through college uh, and after I coached high school football, I was varsity assistant coach. And I always thought I was going to be a teacher and a coach. Really, I was going to be a coach and a teacher. Um, <laughs> and uh, that that was where I was going. And then God, you know, through various events, called me out of that and into the uh, to go to seminary, but uh, and but I always had that dream. I always dreamt as a little kid I was going to be a, college, uh, a professional football coach, and I I I can tell you, and I, I look back and I go, God, I don't have just fifty three guys on my team. You you've given me this incredible opportunity to 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 coach hundreds and thousands of guys, and um, I'm just so grateful for for what God has done and you know just like that first conference I never thought we'd be here 30 years later still doing this and now um, at age 65 I just look like you know what I took another step three years ago when I left Elmbrook in a, in a good way to start no regrets full time and it's kept me young <laughs> and it's kept me on my knees but now I I can just invest in 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 leaders and in 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 the churches like yourself where I can just step in and help in any way that we can to encourage and equip and raise up that next generation of of leaders um, and for the local church and so it's truly is a privilege and an honor and so grateful for for the way God's um, taken me down this path and I love working with you. Yeah. Well, I love, I love that visual because, you know, they talk about in NFL coaches, the coaching tree and you're like, Oh, Mm -hmm. all of the coaches who worked with Bill Walsh or Bill Parcells or Bill Belichick, I guess you need to have the name Bill to be a head coach. Um, That's why Steve's are pastors. Bill's are, I guess, head coaches. But, um, but do you think about that coaching tree that you have when it comes to a ministry of men and you look at all of that, man, what a, what a kingdom difference. Um, No regrets. Check it out. February 4th. You can go to men with no regrets.org. Check it out. Sign up. If you have questions, even you just, you want to hear from me, you can always reach out Steve at Steve Ryan Carter, uh, dot com. I'd love to tell you more about it, but, um, man, we got a great lineup that are speaking. Albert Tate, Chris Brown, I know is there. It's the 30th anniversary. Obviously Steve Sonderman's there. Um, there, there's a, there's a group, a great group of, platform speakers, breakout speakers that will talk again about purpose and marriage. Even, even, um, I'm speaking on one that's all about, um, who is Jesus. And so mm-hmm. there, so this is not just an event for those that follow Christ. This is, um, going to push you if you want to get deeper in Christ, but many guys are showing up and they have just gone through it. They are just, they're at the end of the rope. They need this. Um, and this might be the, 
great first invite. They might never walk to your into your church, <laughs> but they might walk into a room of 4,000 men and go, okay, I can maybe give this a shot. And that can be the thing that spurs them on. So again, check it out, menwithnoregrets.org. Steve, anything else you want to say about the conference or the cohort or any yeah, lasting words? I, I would just say, just to, to, I mean, you've, you've done such a great job of describing it. Um, for those listening, there are some different options. You could be a host site and uh, it's not too late. Um, and we stream, it's a plug and play. So it is so easy. Um, you can go on our website and learn more about that. That We do have a conference specific uh, website. It's just noregretsconference.org. Um, but you could do that. But the other, another option is we have a small group option. And so if you're just thinking about this for the first time, maybe just have a few guys over to your living room, your condo complex, your basement, your man cave, uh, in your workplace, your boardroom, wherever. And it's, it's much cheaper that way. And you can just have some guys over and, and, and do it that way. Or there is the individual op- you know, option as well. But we really encourage guys to do this together, whether it's the small group piece or as a host site at your church. So um, great lineup. Of course, Steve's going to be with us again. And uh, other guys, like like you said, Chris Brown, Mark Batterson, and Rod Harrison, and just Albert. And it's just going to be a great, great, great day. So it's a great way to bring some guys just like Steve did last year. And of course, he didn't tell you the rest of the story. And uh, we had the huge ice storm that weekend. And um, as a result, two of our speakers had to cancel that day on Friday. So as Steve is driving up in snow in the snow um, from Chicago, I called him and said, listen, uh, you're already signed up for the conference. I know you're on your way. How would you like to do the keynote to close the whole thing? And he did. And he did an unbelievable job. Talked on uh, Just Say Yes from Acts chapter 9. And uh, it's been one of our most downloaded messages ever. And so it was just, uh, I appreciate your availability and willingness to step in. That was phenomenal. Oh man, it was a, it was, it was a, a good, good night and uh, a great, great time. Um, well, Steve, thank you so much, man. I'm going to see you in February. Uh, check out no regrets conference, uh, dot com. No regrets org or men with no regrets.org. Check out those two com- um, websites. They're amazing. Um, and, Thank you so much for tuning in to the Crafting Character Podcast. I love what we're getting to do with Food for the Hungry. Some of you have have given towards what we shared towards the end of the year. Um, it's a way for us to be helping our brothers and sisters in Africa. And there's so much good that's happening on Preaching Today. We are going to help you get better at your craft. I can't wait as we start next podcast episode breaking down how to study how to get to the heart of the context how to find the ache and the teach so get ready come prepared steve sonderman thanks so much i'll see you soon grace and peace everyone Mm -hmm.